This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2022 Dell XPS 15 model 9520. So you're forgiven if you think I'm whipping out last year's model because the design is unchanged. Pretty much all the features are unchanged, which means this will not be a very long review, but the performance has significantly increased with Intel 12th generation 45 watt processors. We're going to look at it now. All right, before we get on to the other stuff, which is largely the same, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's still a very attractive CNC aluminum unibody design and you've got lovely display options and all that sort of thing. Well, let's talk about the performance. Just get this out of the way right away because Wow, what a, just like with the XPS 17 for 2022 that we reviewed recently, performance jump for the Intel 12th generation 45 watt processors is really impressive. And it's not, we, you know, with the Ultrabook processors, we've seen a little bit of, yeah, that's better, but it can't sustain the load for thermal reasons. Here it can sustain the load. So I'm talking 1,000 points more in PC Mark 10, 3,000 points more for Geekbench 5 multi core versus the last generation with an 11th gen processor, and 5,000 points more for Cinebench R23 for the multi core test. So, yowza! Nice. The single core tests are not so different, a little bit higher, but multi-core. So we know that Intel gets some of this performance by throwing more watts at the processor, right? Generating some heat and all the attendant issues around that sort of thing compared to AMD Ryzen 6000 series processors, which are, you know, a bit more power efficient, let alone Apple's M1 and M2 processors. But that said, the heat is pretty well managed here. Dell's kind of got it down at this point as to how to cool this thing. It's still a very thin and relatively speaking light 15 inch mobile workstation slash multimedia fun machine. So I'm not saying that it's going to be like amazingly chillax or something like that, but it, it's not a thermal disaster either. So that's a good thing. It's certainly no worse than the 11th gen. In fact, it's a little bit better. Now for the display options on this, just like last year, we have 16 by 10 aspect ratio displays and you have three displays to choose from. If you're budget minded or perhaps more battery runtime minded, there's the full HD plus resolution 1920 by 1200. That's an IPS 500 nit display. That one's matte non-touch. We have the 3.5K resolution OLED display, which is lovely to look at and which is a touch screen and which is glossy. That one's 400 nits because typically OLEDs don't get as bright in laptops and they do consume more power. So the OLED as ever will be the one that you don't pick if you really need the longest possible battery life. And lastly, there is a full 4K plus resolution IPS display that gets brighter at 500 nits. So if you're a little bit needing more brightness or want to see a little bit better battery life, then that option is available to you as well. And that one is touch screen too. So it's good. There's something for everybody there, including the delight of OLED, if you don't mind the battery life hit. And as always with OLED displays, if you want to get more run times out of it, go with the dark th theme, which usually Dell sets as a default for their OLED models and avoid showing a lot of white screen a lot of the time because showing whites is what OLED sucks at. Basically, it consumes more power there. If it's dark, then, then you're, you're good. All right. As ever, it's an upgradable system. So we have two RAM slots. You can go anywhere from eight to 64 gigs of RAM. We have an M.2 SSD. You can order with fast SSDs, a variety of capacities. So that stuff is excellent. And still, just like the last generation, there's that kind of emasculated entry level model, which yeah, sure, it's way cheap, right? It's under 1500 bucks, but that's the only one that doesn't have any dedicated GPU, no NVIDIA RTX 3050 or 3050 Ti, which are your options for all the other models. The one's a Core i5, and that one even has a smaller 56 watt hour battery. So instead of the 86 watt hour battery on all the rest of them. So yeah, watch out for that low end model. That's what happens when you tell your IT person, I really want an XPS 15, but you don't specify the specs and you end up getting that one. All right. So RTX graphics, like I mentioned there, and you know, 3050 to 3050 Ti, you're looking at 40, 45 watt GPUs here. So not a lot of thermal headroom on these. It's not a gaming laptop, but it's certainly good enough to play older games or some online massive multiplayer ones that really don't need a lot of GPU power. You can use it for that. You can get it with a Core i7 or a Core i9 in addition to that Core i5. And you've got killer Wi-Fi 
6 with Bluetooth 5.2, and that's actually an Intel AX211 card. So you've got a fingerprint scanner, Windows Hello, a white backlit keyboard, the usual stuff. The keyboard is the same as last generation, so is the trackpad, which is to say short travel, but it feels crisp and responsive with good key return. And the trackpad is humongous. It sort of looks Apple derivative, but I mean, it's there for you, and it works just fine, too. For ports, you have a USB-C port, a Thunderbolt 4 port, a full-size SD card slot, yay that, and onto creators, obviously, and a headphone jack, and that is it. So, dongle life is it with this. Obviously, you're going to need adapters or little mini Dell docks, that sort of thing, if you need to use so-called legacy peripherals, uh, like USB-A, for example, or HDMI. Obviously, you can do display port out via the USB-C port as well, so that's easy enough. Just get a USB-C to display port cable or a USB-C to HDMI. So there are options there, but they involve little adapters, but that's, that's how they're rolling with the XPS line because they're trying to make it as thin and light and small as possible and compete with the Mac, even though, ironically, Apple's starting to add ports back, but that's okay. As ever, you get a 130-watt USB-C charger, the usual Dell affair, and normally USB-C tops out at 100 watts, but they did some special mojo to let it go a bit above that, obviously. So you've got your choice of two batteries, like I said, but only the entry-level model has that really small capacity battery. For the 86-watt hour that we have, and probably most of you will end up getting, it's going to depend on which display you go with. Like I said, OLED the worst, the full HD Plus resolution will be the best, and what you're doing with it. So it's getting to be a moving target when you quote battery life but say you had the full HD plus and the big battery and you had dedicated graphics but you were doing productivity work social media and streaming and all that sort of thing you should be able to get about seven hours out of it if you set your display brightness to 200 nits now whack about two hours off of that if you have the 3.5k OLED like we do and the 4k plus IPS display should be sitting somewhere in between so given the level of performance here I mean this is enough performance to be doing blend they're obviously to be doing the whole Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, Premiere, and all that sort of stuff. Scientific computational software, that's not bad. That's pretty fair, especially for something, again, this thin and light. They could have put a bigger battery in it, but it would have been thicker and heavier. So that's the 2022 Dell XPS 15 as ever. Same laptop, lovely design, great display options, nice keyboard, good trackpad, all those things. The only thing that's changed are the processors, and for the better, we see significantly more performance without any thermal or battery life deterioration. Who could ask for more? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.